is epidendrums, the Atticozoicum, Jasminosmum, have been left out in the garden and basically been forgotten about for at least three to five years. And as we can see, they're not looking terribly healthy. But being epidendrum and being tough as old nails, they're still clinging on, producing new shoots and wanting to survive. We'll show you what's going to be the best media to repot these and revive them. Welcome to the Nature Company. And if this is the information you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you're notified of all our upcoming videos and don't miss out on a thing. Another day, another drama. But I've got all the excuses in the book, believe me. We have our nice two new pots ready. They're the same size as the original pots they were in. They are fairly fast growing, so I like to plant them into a nice big pot with a media that's going to last them long enough. We use these big, thick, chunky bark chips and this is just a bark mulch that's used to put across the top of your beds and of course a wonderful organic compost. This is basically all the ingredients that I'm going to be using and we'll show you how to put them together now. So just taking a quick dive in to have a look. You can see this one is going to come out relatively easily. This is going to be a lot more difficult with all these trees that have decided they wanted to grow in the same pot. Let's just get this one out first. It's actually quite loose in the pot. And now you see why we use such a big pot, how big the root system can get. But most of this is going to be completely dead. Now this is going to be the tough one with all the roots coming out the bottom. Let's do all the basics first, just removing the offending roots that are going to make it impossible to pull out. as one big clogged up root mass. You see most of these epidendrum roots are completely rotten, just totally intertwined with these fig tree roots. So let's get in and do the necessary. So both these epidendrums are from Ecuador, generally up in the mountainous areas, so they at quite high elevations. This is what makes them like the intermediate climate conditions. They prefer to get quite a high differential between the daytime temperatures and the nighttime temperatures, as well as getting cool winter rests. They are often found growing either in the trees, in those nooks and crannies, or on rocks as lithophytes, or in the debris around the base of the trees. So they generally like that rich media that is found on the jungle floors, and in those cracks between the rocks where all those leaves have fallen and rocks providing a humus rich environment. And that's what we're going to try and replicate in our media using that good quality organic compost, the ungraded bark mulch, the big bark at the bottom of the pot just to make sure that that drainage is good. So we'll just go through cleaning these up, cutting off all the old things, checking what roots are still viable and then potting them up. So we have two pots we want to fill. So we'll take one equal size pot full with this ungraded bark mulch, a good quality organic compost. We'll take an equal measure and pour that in. Mixing it to get an even consistency. And it looks pretty much like what you'd find at the base of any tree in a forest. So be the perfect mix for them. Okay, we'll then take our medium sized decorative bark chunks. So we're filling them approximately one third with these large bark chunks. This is going to help as the plant grows because it gets such a, roots, a big root system to get in between these bark chunks and still allow for that maximum air movement around the base of the roots so that it will stop any of that rotting or such that might want to, to happen. 
And because we don't have terribly large root volume on, uh, on any of these plants, what we're gonna do is we'll basically just fill up the pots to the brim and then we can make our little divot to plant it into. We don't wanna compact this media. These plants have high light requirements and also they require very good air movement. So generally they do better outdoors than they will do indoors. And also because of their size that they grow to, often they'll be too big for an indoor space anyway. So we wanna make sure we've got a big enough size pot that's gonna see them through at least a, a couple of years because I don't tend to want to disturb them too often and I like to get that huge big display. So this should last between three and five years and then we'll have a plant that needs to be divided and repotted again anyway. So this is just gonna be easy now. We're gonna be using our stakes and our grafting tape. This is nice because it has that little bit of stretch so it's not going to damage the plant at all and once the plant itself is rooted enough to hold itself up we'll remove the stake and the budding tape so it's not going to in any way restrict the growth of the plant and it just makes it look neater. This is the Epidendrum jasminosmum. We'll see where's the best spot for it and basically just move some of the media out the way and then just close it in gently. We'll leave most of the roots uncovered and we'll take our stake, finding a nice position that we're not going to damage any of the, the roots that are left on the plant and push our stake all the way into the bottom. And there we go, we're going to have an upright plant. Taking a piece of our grafting tape, long enough piece so we can tie it without causing any damage anywhere and then just tying it off gently. Now that's nice and stable. It's not gonna blow around terribly much in the wind and we've made sure the new growth is out above the ground and we've got some of these roots that are, are still getting the air from the surface and that's gonna grow happily now. To get these to grow at their best, highlight, lots of air movement, a big enough space to put them into. They are heavy feeders. So like your Vanders, you can feed them once a week during the growing season, which is spring through summer and then taper it off down into winter and winter you can give them a rest. Also, they like to be moist they are from high rainfall areas, but in a media like this, you don't have to keep watering them all the time. You can just monitor how damp your media is and you should be golden. Thank you for sitting through another repotting video with me. I had been online and noticed there was very little information about these Ecuadorian reed stem epidendrums and thought if you're having troubles growing them, let me help you get the best chance to get them to grow successfully. And if you find any information in this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you're not already, subscribe down below and hit that notification bell, bing bong, to be notified of all our upcoming videos. Help us grow as we help your plants grow.